Evidently, T. Oscar Hernandez took a look at what was going on with the L.A. Dodgers and thought, hey, that looks fun. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball, and I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please, there's my lower third. You can call me Sully, and I am back for my sixth year as a host here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Follow us on Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And hey, who's sponsoring us today? I'll tell you exactly who. Today's sponsor is brought to you in part by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treats over 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. And use code locked on to get 20 bucks off your order. That's JSE Medical. Com. Follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Hey, uh, pulling back the curtain a little bit, this is my first show that I'm recording in 2024. I know I had a couple of shows on uh, last week, but I recorded them well in advance. I actually took a couple of weeks off. I feel like I, you know, wanted to spend my Christmas and the week after New Year's just, you know, recharge the old batteries and everything like that. And I am, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And Teoscar Hernandez gave me a wonderful in. Now, look at, oh, that's my first look at of 2024. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez had a disappointing season last year when he was acquired from the Toronto Blue Jays to join the Mariners who were coming off of a fine season. Now, T. Oscar wound up playing all 160 games, or uh, played 160 games. So obviously, he gave uh, uh, the Mariners everything he could. Um, you know, he did hit 26 home runs, uh, but he had a mediocre OPS. His OPS plus showed that he was just, a, you know, an average production. And you also saw his strikeout total was obscene. Even by today's standards, 211 strikeouts to only 38 walks. File that under yikes. However, yeah, he had a down season his first year with the Seattle Mariners. He was a very productive hitter in his years with the Toronto Blue Jays, especially 2021, when if if the Blue Jays had played a little better down the stretch, they probably would have won that division, and who knows how far they would have gone in 2021. But I digress. He's been an all-star. He's been a silver slugger, and now he's joining the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, the, he had a he had a down season, so he's hoping for an uptick. And in so many ways, in the contract that he signed with the Dodgers, which is a one-year deal, there's, I think it was Keith Law who said there's no such thing as a bad one-year deal. He's joining the Dodgers to basically join the super team there. And we all know this Dodger team, which for all of its flaws last year, won 100 games. And now they've filled in some of those flaws. They're going to have a stronger starting pitching staff, provided, you know, the, provided Tyler Glass now avoids injuries. Uh, and Yamamoto is the pitcher. You know, if Yamamoto is 70% of the pitcher that we think he's going to be, that's still a huge improvement. I still think they should ask Kershaw back. I know he's coming off of an injury, but they, you know, you're bringing in, uh, obviously, Otani is a, is a tremendous acquisition. There would be absolutely zero pressure put on Teoscar Hernandez when you consider, yes, he was an MVP candidate and an all-star when he played with Toronto and there was ex they were expecting all-star production with him in Seattle. This is a Dodger team 
where either Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, or Shohei Otani will be the third best player on the team. So for T. Oscar, he sees this as a chance to play in the postseason, possibly go deep in the postseason if the Dodgers wind up having a good October, and he could just fit in the lineup and, oh, yeah, make a big pile of money. You know, when you look at the team and you you have, as, as I mentioned, Otani, Freeman, and Betts are the superstars on that team. Sometimes when you see some really tremendous teams, even some of the big winning teams of, of recent years, you've had a sense of depth on the team that have allowed a little bit of a, a, a revolving door in some of the positions. Excuse me as I scratched my nose. You're, you can now put Manuel Margot and, you know, uh, Jason Hayward, Chris Taylor, Miguel Rojas. These are all players that can be rotated in along with Teoscar Hernandez. The Probably the best constructed team I've ever seen in my life was the 1998 New York Yankees. And the reason I say they're the best constructed, with the exception of Mariano Rivera, who was the best closer in baseball, although statistically you could have argued Tom Gordon, but I'm not going to do that. If you went along each position on that team, there was probably someone better at every position, but they were they had an answer at every position. You know, uh, uh, Frank Thomas was better than Tino Martinez. Ken Griffey Jr. was better than Bernie Williams. But the depth of that team was astonishing. And they had a rotating door in left field. Shane Spencer, Ricky Lede, Daryl Strawberry, Tim Raines, Chad Curtis. They all played in one way, shape, or another along the course of the season. And, you know, Torrey rode the hot hand, whatever it was, and it all kind of worked out. So I think this is a smart move for T. Oscar because if he relaxes, if he says there's zero pressure on me in L.A., and he plays to the level that he was in Toronto, then you're going to see what? Great production in the 6th, 7th, or 8th spot, or the ninth spot. I keep forgetting that nationally doesn't have a DH anymore. I hate the universal DH topic for another podcast. So I think this is this is a smart move for T. Oscar. It's a smart move for the Dodgers. And it's one where there's virtually no pressure on any of the teams at that, on, on any of the, the uh players in that now as i said dodgers are clearly going to win 100 to 110 games this year the giants are not but the giants could still contend remember the giants were ahead of the arizona diamondbacks in early august and also the diamondbacks had some disastrous stretches down this down the season if the giants were just a tiny bit better in stretches here or there, they could have been a playoff team last year. And we've all seen what being a playoff team could mean the last few years. They've made a couple of moves that are, are kind of interesting. And the Mariners, who missed narrowly missed the playoffs, remember they were in first place by themselves in September at one point. And eventually the Rangers passed them, the Diamondbacks passed the Giants, and those are the two teams that been the World Series. The Giants traded for Robbie Ray. God, there's so many moves that the Mariners made in in recent years to sort of push them over the top that didn't quite work out. Tiasca Hernandez didn't work out. Robbie Ray didn't work out. That is the, de- the Robbie Ray acquisition is the definition of a high risk, high reward deal. Remember, he won a Cy Young Award a couple of years ago, and last year he pitched one more game than I did. But if Robbie Ray comes back and is mildly good, then that's an improvement. They, the Giants trade away Mitch Haniger, who was a non-factor in the team, sent him back to Seattle to essentially replace Teoscar Hernandez, and Anthony Discofani, who's okay. Not great, but he's okay. It seems like the Mariners are kind of like pushing their peas around the the, the table. They also acquired Luke Rayleigh. They're kind of like saying, okay, we don't have Teoscar Hernandez, but we're just going to grab every other okay 
reliever or okay outfielder and see what we can make see what kind of goulash we can make in our outfield as the team tries to make the postseason again meanwhile the giants well they seem to be operating by the mentality of if we just get a bunch of okay players and we were okay last year then maybe we'll get okay again. I just was up in the Bay Area. Every Giant fan is frustrated as hell. But I'm looking at this team saying they're making a bunch of, you know, not spectacular, but not horrible moves. And, you know, it to me, it was, they're certainly aiming for the 87 win mark, which we've seen might be enough. Another team out there, the team that I grew up rooting for, is having a weird offseason, and one we're going to address after we hear from someone. I just figured out the other day that the NFL postseason has not begun yet. I thought it was beginning. What the heck did the playoffs start? Evidently, the season's wrapping up. And it's still time to get in the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, which is French. Find bets in the new Explore tab and make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. How many parlays can we put in there? Parlez-vous bonus bets? Je m'appelle Sully, and I'm recommending FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, and you can make your first bet a layup. That's a basketball term for football bets. FanDuel is an official partner of the National Football League. Quick reminder, Lockdown has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to our first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, the Red Sox made a big trade that I did not mention (laughs) so there you go uh the red sox traded away chris sale and they traded him to the atlanta braves for vaughn gorsham i way back when before i was a a host here on the lockdown podcast network i urged the red sox on my old podcast on my old blog i urged the red sox to trade Chris Sale after he got the final out of the 2018 World Series. The reason I did that was I knew he had his contract was coming up. I also knew his value was never going to be higher than that moment. And while I loved Chris Sale as a Red Sox fan, I felt the Red Sox got everything they wanted from him. They got a Cy Young caliber season and they got a they got him on the mound to clinch the World Series in his two years with the Red Sox. And so I said, hey, trade him now before he breaks down. They didn't. They signed to a long-term deal, and he's been breaking down and not being the Chris Sale that we all knew and loved striking out Manny Machado. But, you know, they they kept him. You know, Sale helped them a little bit in 2021 when they got to within two wins of the World Series. He's not been a factor the last few years, and I've been a big Chris Sale fan. Just hasn't been working out. So when the Braves came calling for him and traded Vaughn Grisham for him, I actually think this is a smart move for the Boston Red Sox. I think this is a smart move. Now, now, granted, I also think it is a uh, a high risk, high reward deal for the Atlanta Braves if Chris Sale comes back and is at all healthy and is half the Chris Sale that he was before, then they are getting more terrific pitching depth on a team that's already going to clearly win 95 to 100 games. However, Vaughn Grisham is a 23-year-old. He turned 23 just uh, two or three days ago. 
uh, 23-year-old second baseman who is considered to be a top infield prospect. And with that, you know, he could put, they could insert him right into the second base hole. And um, I'm all for that. I'm absolutely all for it. I think it's a, I think it's a, they, if they could get a starting second baseman and a second baseman is going to be there for a bunch of years, I, I, I'm in. I'm absolutely in. It's funny. You know, Connor Wong is the, the last remaining figure after trading away uh, Verdugo. Uh, Wong is the final piece standing from the, uh, the Mookie Betts deal. Um, and there's rumors that the Red Sox might be dealing away Kenley Jansen, their lone all-star from last year. I'm all for that. Jansen is not part of the long-term solution of this team. But I look at the team and I say, hey, look it. Oop, second one. Hauk, Crawford, Bello, and they they wound up trading, they wound up signing for Lucas Giolito. Um, they have a couple other young pitchers here or there. Plus, uh, having it in their lineup, uh, Cassis at first, Duran at center. Uh, there's rumors they may be trying to deal Yoshida. I like having Yoshida on the team. And Devers in the lineup as well. There are some young pieces on this team. And I would prefer the Red Sox, you know, put Grisham in there, see if he can be a starting second baseman. I would prefer the Red Sox to look at 2024 as a transition year and give some of those players one more year, sort of figure out what they got, and then go out and spend like crazy for 2025 and beyond. I don't mind that they're not spending money like drunken sailors. I think some of the, some of them the moves that they've been not making have been moves that I'm, I'm, I'm okay because I do, I'm okay with some of them because I think there, there's a, I'm hoping that there's a plan here, a good young infield, some good young outfielders, a couple of pitchers they can develop and then take a look and say, okay, now we can start spending like crazy going in 2025. If they wind up getting another good season out of Casas if they get another good season out of Duran, if Bello and Crawford and Hauk all pitch well and they wind up winning, you know, having a, I'd want them to have a winning season and contend for, you know, be in the, at least on the outskirts of the wild card chase. If they do that and then don't have an aggressive offseason next year, I'll be mad. But I don't mind the fact that the team is sort of stepping back and saying, what do we got here? What are we? Instead of just saying, oh, we're the, you know, instead of going nuts. I'll be mad if they're not super aggressive next year. But I like this move. I like Vaughn Grisham. And you know what? Deal Jansen. Deal Jansen while he has the, the value. I was right about Chris Sale. So see if I'm right now. Let's hear a little bit from our friends over at Jace Medical. Now, I know we come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but let's just talk a minute about preparing for real life. According to FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like moxicillin right in the middle of one of the worst flu seasons we've had in over a decade, and that's scary. Now, I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than for one of my kids getting sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medication that they need. Thankfully, we'll all be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off of your first order. Jace Medical, 
That's J A S E medical.com. I hope you haven't forgotten that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Uh, Quick note, I got a couple people pointing out when I did my episode on baseball players having cameos in... TV shows and movies, more than one person pointed out that I didn't mention Bob Euchre. And I, yeah, it's it seems strange because obviously he has this great role as Harry Doyle in the Major League movies, but he also was a sitcom star in Mr. Belvedere where he wasn't playing Bob Euchre at all. And he's, look, at say what you want about the, it was a hit show of which a former baseball player was one of the stars of. And he's incredibly charming on the show and he was God, he's so funny. He was so funny as a guest on Carson. He was watch his speech when he was elected to the Hall of Fame of uh, with the Ford. Was it the Ford Frick Award or which whichever he was? Uh, he, the when he was elected in as a broadcaster, his speech is absolutely hilarious. So yeah, that's a, an egregious uh, uh, omission on my part. Uh, apparently, Nick Swisher was also on how you how I met your mother. I, I had seen that mentioned before. I've never seen the show. I never watched that show. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad, but uh, I'm sure he was terrific on it. So, yes, those are a couple that I missed. I've been reading a lot about some of the problems of baseball. So in some of the books and everything I've been reading uh, during the Christmas break, reading about how baseball has lost its popularity to football, how there's issues of where the A's are even going to play how big market teams just will make small revenue teams forced to give up all their star players. You're going to see dominance of big market teams and just running all over the the smaller market teams who can barely compete. And the disparity is insane. And people looking at the television ratings and saying, God, what, people are just have turned to football. All the while, we have an entertainment world that keeps changing because of technology and Satan movies are just the same blockbusters rehashed over and over again. And we're, you know, coming off of a presidential election that has really polarized the country. And some people think, was it even on the level? Ah, but that's enough about the 1960s. That's right. More than a dozen years before I was even born, we were talking about the same stuff. The same problems have always been rehashed over and over and over again. It's been the same issues. And yet, here we are, 60-some-odd years later, and baseball's still around. And you still see a lot of different teams contending. And I think that we have seen a massive improvement in terms of making the game more interesting for other fan bases, and that is the great equalizer. You know, a lot of people have mentioned on the YouTube comments or wherever you are asking my thoughts on a salary cap. I think a salary cap is stupid. What we need is a salary floor. What we actually need is a salary audit, or let me rephrase that, a luxury tax audit. Why do you have to curb the spending of the owners, but not curb the profits that owners could make. Do you know the A's turned a profit? A lot of these teams turn a profit. In fact, I don't believe there's any team losing money. And do you know why I know that? Because every time the owners have been asked to open their books to show us how much money they're losing, they never seem to do it, which makes me think they're making money. Also, they're talking about expansion. So how can teams be folding and expanding? That was the thing that blew my mind during the whole ridiculous player strike of 94 and owner's lockout of 95 was the owners kept claiming, if we don't do things soon, some franchises were fold and we're expanding into Arizona and Tampa Bay. Well, which is it? Are you folding or are you expanding? What are you doing wrong? 
So I believe the main thing that has to happen is an audit of the luxury tax. If you want to put the luxury tax on there, which is a soft cap, and by the way, tomorrow, on tomorrow's episode, I'm going to take a good long look at how baseball, which doesn't have a salary cap, measures up to football in the NBA in terms of a variety of teams that not only get into the postseason, but get to the the penultimate round and to the championship rounds, whether it's the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, or the World Series. Then you have those three leagues, NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball. Oh, one has no salary cap, therefore small market teams can't compete, and the other ones have a salary cap. The results might surprise you. And yes, a team could have a great run at it and then fall back. Take a look at the Kansas City Royals. But you know what? That happens in every sport. There are teams that have great runs and then fall down. There are teams that go on wild rushes. Take a look at some of the NBA Finals I'm going to bring up where it's the same freaking teams over and over again. How's the AFC looking for the last decade? It's been, what, three teams made the Super Bowl? Chiefs, 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 Patriots, 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 Patriots. It's not like that in baseball. But we'll go over that in great detail. But the luxury tax is the key. The luxury tax, if that is the audit, if if that is audited correctly, the idea of the luxury tax is the closest thing you're ever going to get to a salary cap in baseball. That is, if you overspend like like banana boats time, like the you know, like the Dodgers have been doing, or the Padres did a couple of years ago, or the Mets did a couple of years ago, whatever, that some of that money goes into a pool and some of the lower revenue team, the lower revenue teams in, you know, tiny markets like Miami or you know <laughs> or the San Francisco Bay Area. What's happening here? What planet am I on? That if you the the money is supposed to go in a pot and there's some redistribution of that wealth. Something, by the way, the NFL figured out a long time ago in terms of having teams work together, but I digress. Oh, boy, if, if baseball had only gotten their act together in the early 60s. But when you have teams like the A's or the Orioles or whomever getting money from the luxury tax, there has to be a public audit to say, what are you spending it on? You don't get that money unless you spend it on making your team better. You can't pocket that money. You can't throw that money into the owner's coffers. That has to be spent on on making the team better. It's kind of like those accounts that you know that you put money away it has to be spent on a child's education you can't spend this money unless you're spending it on things that make your roster better it doesn't have to be going on a free agent spending spree it could be resigning your stars it could be just going after international free agents or whatever but you have to show that you're using that money to improve your 40-man roster otherwise you don't get the money who gets the money? I'll take it. But I do think that that is the great equalizer. But the problems that baseball is facing right now are the same ones we've been seeing over and over and over again, well before free agency, even before expansion. So baseball always seems to have these issues, and baseball finds ways to survive. Are they going to surpass football? In terms of popularity, no. The same way, you're probably not going to, if you're making an independent film, you're not going to beat the next Spider-Man movie. But there are ways to move forward, and baseball always finds ways to survive. Now, in tomorrow's episode, we are going to take a look at, amongst other things, the disparity of teams that have made it to the World Series, made it to the Super Bowl, made it to the NBA Finals, and take a look how, does a salary cap improve that, or does it make it kind of sort of the same? 
be taking a good long look at that, but I'm going to ask you a question. Since the turn of the millennium, and whether you call that 2000 or 2001, the answer is going to be the same. Who are the only teams to not appear in a league championship series? There's more than one, but not much more, than, not many more than one. Sorry, it's late and I'm, I'm a little rusty. So uh, that's your trivia question. Who are the only teams since the turn of the millennium to not play in the league championship series? So follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now and on Instagram, and I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Getting back into the saddle and getting ready to do a bunch of these shows. This has been Locked On MLB for the 8th day of January, 2024. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.